Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new episode of Some Majesty Reacts with me, your host, Smarty. You can find me on all social media platforms at Smarty237. But if this is your first time joining us, do well to click on the subscribe button below and turn on post notifications so you get notified each time we post new content. Um, yeah, on SM Reacts, we dive into the happenings in the Cameroonian entertainment industry. And with that being said, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. No one. Nada ba. Nada ba. Under normal circumstances, I usually start my episode with the top five music videos that caught my attention the past week. But this past week, there have been some releases, you know, but I couldn't really curate a top five. So I just let it slide. However, Daphne released a new song with an accompanying music video. And it's Daphne. Everybody already knows that when it comes to Daphne, there is some sort of bias coming from my end. But I'll try to, you know, talk about this as straight and as politically correct as I can be. The song is entitled La Ba. It was written by Mr. Leo Lesby and Daphne herself. Production credits go to Aquando and the music video was directed by Czech in collaboration with uh, Ada and Kenji. I'm going to start with the music video. I loved the music video. I like the cinematic feel that Mr. Czech brought to the video. I love Daphne. She's beautiful, the red hair, vibrant colors and all of that good stuff, but it's not Gang Stevens. Not Gang Stevens. Gang Stevens holds the key to Daphne's uh, music videos. Whenever they work together, it's magic. I would also like to say that uh, Daphne's vocals are beautiful. It's soft, it's like butter, it's sweet, it's... Daphne's vocals are still there, you know. And that is, those are the two things that caught my attention. The music video with her red hair and her beautiful look and her vocals. Now, talking about the song, I would be lying if I said that, oh my god, this is the biggest hit that Daphne has ever released. Oh my god, this is great now. Nah. It's a good song. Uh, is it worth the hype? I do not think so. My thing is, until Daphne has that hit, you know, she's really going to struggle. And we have noticed that a lot of our top tier urban acts are struggling. Mr. Liu is struggling. Daphne is struggling. It's, it's really not easy to, to keep up, you know. So I would advise um, Daphne to reach out to, um, not necessarily Salatiel. Salatiel is working on his solo career right now, like me, man, on the steady. But reach out to people like Phil Bill. Phil Bill produced Hallelujah. And Phil Bill has this touch that he brings to music that, you know, he, he's a hit maker. Should reach out to Sango Edi, kind of get that Makosa feel vibe thing going on. Reach out to DJ Kao, experiment with different music producers till she finds that song or those couple of songs that will be hits. She puts them out there and then she brings forth her album. Laba is a weak song and I know Daphne is watching. And uh, yeah, um, all the best to her. I'm happy that she actually did come back, but there's a lot of work that has to be done for her to solidify her spot as the queen of urban music in Cameroon. All the best, Daphne. Moving on, I would like to talk about Meshi. Meshi, who recently announced that she has parted ways with her record label, Zion Records. If you don't know, uh, Zion Records is the label that was responsible for promulgating uh, Meshi into superstardom. You know, um, I would like to say that it's really going to be difficult for Meshi moving forward because Zion Records made it kind of complicated for Meshi. So basically, they set Meshi out there, did her a couple of collaborations with uh, A-list artists. She had a song with a uh, local which I love. She had Rambuse with Salatiel. She had uh, Gete and a couple of other songs. And you will notice that it is those collaborations that had millions of views. And in Meshi's head, 
that would mean that because she has millions of views, she's a top tier female artist. But when you come down to the reality, her solo songs don't do that well. She actually doesn't have a solo hit song, you know. And that is the thing that got into her head and made her start acting the way that she did. And I'm saying that it's going to be problematic because without the financial input of Zion Records to push those songs or to make sure that she has those collaborative projects, she is going to struggle. And you notice that with her last album. I am sorry for bringing this back, but even the Renew that she attacked, Renew's album launch did way better than Meshi's, you know. Um, and uh, I wish Meshi the very best, but I'm just saying that it's really, really going to be a struggle. Moving on, I would like us to talk about uh, Stanley Enno. Right now, he is the star of a movie. The title of the movie is Back to Kingship and it will be premiering here in Douala on the 15th of October 2021. A Stephen Agbo production, the movie stars Stanley Enno, uh, Joseph Benjamin and Cameroonian born uh, Okawa Shazne. I don't know if she's Cameroonian born but she's of Cameroonian origin, Okawa Shazne and also Kanzi Loris Tanyuson. So see you on the 15th of October 2021 for the movie premiere of Back to Kingship. I would also like to talk about uh, Charlotte Dipanda's concert which took place over the last week, uh, Saturday to be precise. Uh, it was an amazing and successful concert. I think Charlotte Dipanda, every time she announces that she's having a concert, you know, it m doesn't necessarily make headlines, but then she has her fan base. She has her people that are going to pay those tickets to come watch her perform. And from the reports I'm hearing, the turnout was great. She had opening acts like Mimi, Doll, and uh, who else? Sisol. She took the opportunity to reveal to the Cameroonian public her album City, which is available on all streaming platforms. It's an amazing album. You should check it out. Kosi recently slayed in uh, Birmingham, United Kingdom, where his event was sold out. And it's funny because when uh, these blog platforms took to social media to announce that uh, Kosi's event was sold out and then they, they released videos from, this, from the event, a lot of people were throwing shade. There is some sort of club, Nanjangi has performance, nye, 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 And the reason why this is happening is because it's Kosi, right? And most of the attacks were coming from Juvi fans. As long as it's not Jovi, it should not be anybody else. They recently brought the comparison between Hempe by Stanley Eno and Don Foucault by Jovi. And people are like, nee, nee, nee. it's because of Don Foucault that there is a Hempe. Let's be clear. Hempe by Stanley Eno is inarguably the most successful hip hop song by a Cameroonian artist ever. Let's be clear. Let, let's just be clear. Now, if you want to talk about who is more talented, who is a better artist, who is better at marketing, that's a completely different conversation. But those two songs have their place. One paved the way, the other one was way successful. It changed the narrative. So like these lame comparisons, I don't really understand. People, other artists from other countries are really creating history, you know, entering the American market, touring Europe and all of that good stuff. We definitely argue with the Nabas rule. Why are you selling out the club? Who is doing this? All bullshit. And I don't even know why we are doing this. But on a positive note, Jovi gave a shout out to Mimi and Loco for their collaborative project, Fire. And I really love when Jovi does this. Because Jovi is one of those artists that, you know, he doesn't do too much. He doesn't do the most. But the one time that he talks or the one time that he gives a shout out or appreciates another artist's song is amazing because people are not expecting that from him. I would like us to talk about uh, Don Jazzy and our very own 237 Town Crier aka Danny Green. So Danny Green is in Nigeria living his best life, his absolute best life. He's in Don Jazzy's mansion. Don Jazzy made a post of him on Instagram calling him his son. Don Jazzy has adopted our own and Danny Green is living his best life. Videos have been popping up of him uh, cruising in Nigeria with Don Jazzy. They also posted a picture or a couple of pictures that uh, showed the behind the scenes of one comedy skit that they are working on and uh, social media broke loose. 
You don't go for that side, nana so na so they go use you, na so they go do and people are just angry. Everybody is angry on the internet. I do not care for Danny Green's comedy like that. I do not care for Danny Green's person, but they when person is succeed now. Tip off your hat to them. Clap for them. Cameroon has learned to applaud. Carry jealousy and keep somewhere. You people are here dragging this guy. Can you spare mansion? Some of you have never seen a mansion before. But you're dragging someone because they are cruising with Don Jazzy. Like it's like y'all don't even know who Don Jazzy is. Eh? <laughs> there are people, there are successful artists in Nigeria who are dying to meet Don Jazzy. And that is one of our own just cruising with the guy. And it's a problem for you guys. I am not even looking at Dan Green. I'm not even looking at him or his content. I'm looking at the possibilities that this collaboration between both of them can bring for the entertainment industry in Cameroon as a whole. They might be open doors then for we and all you people can think of is to be a hater. Sad. That is all I had for you guys on this episode of SM Reacts. Thank you so much for tuning in. See you next time and uh, take very good care of yourselves. But please, if you haven't done so already, leave a like, drop a comment below and tell us what you think. And most importantly, click on the subscribe button below and click on the notification bell so you get notified each time we post new content on this channel. This is Smarty and you can find me on all social media platforms at Smarty237. God bless you. Bye.